Okay, so welcome to my theory test practice. So we're going to do a quick quest, uh, quiz here, 50 questions, and we're going to um, go through the thought press process. So this is a car driving theory test. So the first one is, what does this sign mean? So it's got cyclists must dismount, cyclists route ahead, cyclists aren't allowed, cyclists single file. So I know that the triangle means warning so I don't think it's for the cyclists I think as in dismount so I would say a warning of a cyclist route ahead because it's not um, a negative like not telling they can't be there so I'm going to put cyclist route ahead okay so next one what should you do if you see a large box fall from a lorry onto a motorway so if that was me I would not stop the car, so go on to the emergency telephone and report the hazard, so potential. Stop close to the box until the police has arrived. Well, it could be dangerous from the vehicle behind. Catch up with the lorry and try and get the driver's attention. Well, again, probably quite dangerous. Pull over to the hard shoulder and then remove the box. Um, see, you could, you could see how you could think, oh, I'll do that. But could you imagine getting, stopping your car um, and then trying to get onto the carriageway that to get the box so it's got to be next emergency telephone and report the hazard at an incident it's important to look after the casualty what should you do with them when the area is safe okay so again if it's safe and they're not in any danger then I, I, I'm gonna look for something like I can't wouldn't move them so move them away from vehicles so we've been told it's safe so probably not give them something to eat again probably not shouldn't give someone something to eat maybe they're in shock ask them how it happened potential i guess keep them where they are well it's probably the word the main word is safe so i would say keep them where they are i would suggest okay next question what does it mean if your vehicle keeps bouncing after you sharply press down or release on the bodywork of the wheel okay so i know this one and i know probably a lot of you out there will, might not know this one so tires are worn that's not going to do anything um with the bouncing the vehicle is on soft ground so if it's soft and you press there it, it will probably sink so the tires are under inflated so you might think that but surely if they're under inflated they're going to sag so probably not going to bounce so the shock absorbers are worn so it's actually the shock absorbers are worn quick explanation here you've got springs on a car now if the springs were just there on their own you would be bouncing down the road so the shock absorbers absorb the bounce okay if they're worn they're going to be weaker which means you'll have more bounce i hope that helps okay so next one what must you do when the amber light is flashing on a pelican crossing again a lot of people get confused on this one right yeah so normal traffic lights is red red and amber and green and they're trying to unify them all the way across these crossings so if you have a look red red and amber green now the only one the old-fashioned ones when they didn't have the infrared beam that could keep it on red until people cross was the pelican crossing so um what must you do when the amber light is flashing on, the, on a pelican crossing so when it's flashing it's because i don't know how many people are on the crossing so it is give way to pedestrians not waiting to cross give way to pedestrians already on the crossing okay so it's going to be that one this one here how will a school crossing patrol signal you to stop so by pointing the um, to the children waiting to cross mm. by displaying the stop sign so potential by displaying a red line mm, don't know about that by giving you an arm signal so if it's a school crossing patrol they normally are um, people refer to them as lollipop people because it looks like a lollipop so it's by displaying the stop sign okay let's have a look which vehicles should you allow extra room for as you overtake them? So it's a lorry, a bicycle, a tractor, a road sweeper. So it's gonna be always bicycles and extra room. It's 1.5 meters now with the new highway code, but it's extra room. Okay. You're turning right onto a dual carriageway. What should you do if the central reservation is too narrow to, con 
maintain your vehicle. A lot of um, people don't practice this. They're not really told about it, but a central reservation um, that has a center part that is too narrow means that you can't sit and wait in it because you'll be blocking vehicles from both ways. So you would um, proceed to the central reservation and wait. Well, like we said, it's too narrow. So probably not. Stop in the first lane so you so that other vehicles will give way. Mm, that's quite dangerous on a dual carriageway. Uh, wait until the road is clear both directions. Possible. Emerge slightly to sow your intentions. It's got to be wait till it's clear so you treat it as two separate. Um, you treat it as one road. If it's if it's wide in the middle, then you can treat it as two separate roads. Okay. Question nine. You are the first person to arrive at an incident where people are badly injured. You've switched on your hazard warning lights and checked all the engines have stopped. What else should you do? Okay, so make sure an ambulance has been called. Um, try and get people who are injured to drink something. Well, probably not. Stop other cars and ask the drivers to help, maybe. Move the people who are injured clear of the vehicles. Okay, so um, you've got to remember that you're in Injured, people are badly injured. You've switched on your hazard warning lights and checked all the engines have stopped. So all the people around have stopped. So this is the one. It's going to have to be, isn't it? It sounds like it's a safe area. Um, you don't want to move the people who are injured clear of the vehicles because you shouldn't move them. So it's going to have to be ambulance. But you can see it's confusing. If you're under a little bit of pressure, you could easily make a mistake here. Okay, what information will be shown in a triangular road sign? So we talked about it a little bit earlier. It's actually, okay, road narrows, ahead only, keep left, minimum speed. Okay, so road narrows, that is sort of warning us, isn't it, yeah? So potential, ahead only, that is that is an order. Keep left, that is an order. Minimum speed that is an order so it's got to be the road narrows is a warning so warnings for triangles question 11 out of 15 what does this sign mean so we know it's a warning okay so is it warning us of a humpback bridge entrance to a tunnel it doesn't look like a tunnel humps in the road soft verge so easy here to make a mistake isn't it yeah um but let's go for humps in the road humpback bridge humps in the road what do you think let's go for humps in the road eh let's see what happens you're approaching a red light at a puffing crossing pedestrians are on the crossing when will the red light change okay so this is a puffing so this is a pedestrian user friendly interface modern crossing so when you start to edge forward on the crossing so nope because you'd stay still while the pedestrians are there when pedestrians push the button on the far side of the crossing no nope, but i can see why people might think that when pedestrians have cleared the crossing so potential when a driver from the opposite direction reaches the crossing so it's when pedestrians have cleared the crossing remember on these modern crossings infrared beams are there holding it on red until they've cleared the crossing okay what does this traffic sign mean so it's round so it's an order and it's a negative order do not so no overtaking allowed mm. no two-way traffic mm. okay potential give priority to oncoming traffic so one-way traffic only so it's an order and it's a, a negative order as in give priority to oncoming traffic so to me that is a that one there I try and work through it as you know work through the the thought process what we try to do your vehicle has stalled in the middle of a level crossing not good what should you do if the warning bell start to ring while you're trying to restart the engine okay so get out of the car and clear the crossing carry on trying to restart the engine run down the track and warn the single operator push the vehicle clear of the crossing okay so let's have a look here yeah again this is actually potentially a really difficult really difficult one and we will go through these if i get any wrong at the end and then we will make sure we understand but 
get out the car and clear the crossing that sounds potentially um like yeah let's do that but i don't know whether we really want to leave the car there if the if the vehicles have only just started so maybe if you can you should um push the vehicle clear of the crossing depends how many people are in it doesn't it yeah um let's go for this one let's see what happens Okay, so you're waiting to turn right out of a minor road. It's clear to the left, but a lorry is coming from the right. What should you wait even if you have enough time? Why should you wait even if you have enough time? So let's break this down. You're waiting to turn right out of a minor road, so we're merging. It's clear to the left, okay, I've got that, but a lorry is coming from the right. Why should you wait? Well, if the lorry is coming from the right okay then it could be hiding somewhere so anything overtaken lorry will be hidden yet that's potential the lorry might be slowing down the lorry could suddenly speed up the load of the lorry might be unstable okay so i think it's hidden isn't it i can go for that how do smart motorways prevent traffic bunching? Well, by using high speed limits, potentially not. By using minimum speed limits, by using advisory speed limits, variable speed limits. So on this variable speed limits, there was a big accident on the M40, I believe, in the 90s, with a big fog bank. And the last vehicle that hit was about 17 miles away, it was a white van. So um, variable speed limits, what it could do, if they know that there's a big accident, they could slow down the traffic by 10 or 20 miles an hour, meaning that the traffic won't build up because the vehicles are slower further back. So it's got to be variable speed limits, S smart motorways. How can you reduce the risk of your vehicle being broken into at night? Okay, well, leave it wheel lit here as possible, isn't it? Don't in, uh, engage the steering lock. Don't engage the steering lock. Okay, well, leave that out a bit. Park on a quiet road. Mm, park quiet roads good for thieves. Park in a poorly lit area. It's going to be well lit area. Probably the best one would be to lock it in a garage, but because that option's not there, we go for the next best option. You want to turn right in, right from a junction. What should you do if your view is restricted by parked vehicles? So, move out quickly to be prepared to stop. Okay, so stop and then move forward slowly until you have a clear view. Uh, sound the horn and pull out if there's no reply. Okay, stop, get out and look along the main road and check. Mm, don't know about that. So I think it would be stop, move forward forward slowly until you have a clear view that will be what driving instructors call creep and peep so we're going to go for that one okay so this one you're waiting at a t-junction what should you do if a vehicle is coming from the right with its left indicator on well you never know do you if they definitely turn in so move out and accelerate hard mm. Pull out before the vehicle reaches the junction. Mm, wait until the vehicle starts to turn. Possibility, move out slowly. I'm going for this one. So you know that he's turning. They are turning, shall I say. The vehicle, your vehicle broke down on the hard shoulder of a motorway but has now been repaired. How should you rejoin the main carriageway? Now I know many people get this wrong. So it's move out onto the carriageway and then build up your speed because uh -uh, the vehicles could be doing 70 if you pull out doing a few miles an hour that's terrifying gain speed on the hard shoulder before moving out onto the carriageway that's a possibility move out onto the carriageway using your hazard warning lights mm, nope wait on the hard shoulder until someone flashes the headlights or you could be there forever i think so what you do you gain speed on the hard shoulder say the vehicles are doing 50 or 60 miles an hour on the carriageway you get roughly to their speed then that gap you're pulling into is going to wait going to be there longer okay so it's number two there you go okay next one what should you do if you overtake a cyclist when it's windy so overtake very slowly mm, sounds safe doesn't it but it could be dangerous sound your horn repeatedly that would terrify me if i was on a bike keep close as you pass well i don't think about that it's going to be this isn't it allow extra room 
Okay, so why is it important to make full use of slip roads as you join a motorway? Same as that, going back to this hard shoulder one, isn't it? It's building up speed. So when you think about building up speed, because there's space available for you to turn around if you need to, mm, I don't know about that, to allow you to fit safely into traffic flow from the left-hand lane, okay? So is that to allow direct access to overtaking lanes mm, because you can continue on the hard shoulder. Okay, so it's going to be to allow you to fit safely into the traffic flow in the left-hand lane. Yes, because you're matching the speed of the traffic. Been working on that today with pupils, actually. Yeah. So, how can you identify traffic signs that give orders? Okay, also, are they really rectangular with yellow border? Mm, okay, I don't know about that. They're square with a brown border. Mm, they're triangular with a blue border. They are circular with a red border. Well, anything that gives orders, um, then they're going to be round. Positive orders are um, like you must go faster than 30, like a minimum speed limit, or limit order is blue circle around it. But if they are a, a negative, do not go faster than 30. They are round or circular with a red border. So that's the one I want. But if it, if the answer was there, circular with a blue border, then that would be the same. Okay, what does this sign mean? So we've got a P and a bus. So directions to park and ride car park. Possible, isn't it? Park and ride. Looks like a bus you can ride on. Directions to a bus or coach park. Okay, but that would be just bus or coach no no parking no parking for buses and coaches or and um, parking area for cars and coaches well, i see you could easily go for that one couldn't you but it's actually directions the arrow and to park and ride car park they have them outside big cities so um what does this sign mean so that's a motorway sign that's your number so through traffic to use left lane Right hand lane is closed ahead. Uh, right hand lane T junction only. 11 ton weight limit. Oh, you can see where the 11 tons, can't you? But it's this one. Right hand lane closed ahead. <laughs> okay, so you're about to go down a steep hill. What should you do to control the speed in your vehicle? Okay, so driving automatics, these are where people sort of fall down a little bit because I'm not sure about gears. So a high gear is something like third or fourth so select a high gear and use the brakes carefully okay so a high gear is going to give you potentially less control more on the brakes select a low gear and use the brakes carefully okay so select a high gear and use the brakes firmly select a low gear and use uh, avoid using the brakes okay so probably don't need to See steep hill. What should you do to control you? So it's very steep hill. So I would say let's use a lower gear. Okay, so like whatever third second, use a low gear and use the brakes carefully. So I would say watch out for the things that says avoid using the brakes. So it would be use the brakes carefully. I would say, but we'll see. See at the end, eh? Okay, so what does this sign mean? National speed limit applies. Looks like it. I think you can see people falling for that. No stopping. Waiting restrictions apply. No entry. The one way people get confused is waiting restrictions, which is the one uh, red that mark down, diagonal mark down. But it's actually no stopping. I think some people get confused with no entry as well, but it's no stopping. Okay, so... Um, when may you drive over a pavement? Pavement, okay. So to overtake slow-moving traffic, mm, probably not. If there are no pedestrians nearby, mm, when the pavement is very wide, to gain access to a property. If you think about it, when you drive into a driveway, someone's house, it, you have to go over the pavement. So it's that, isn't it? All the others don't really make sense. Uh, what should you be aware of? Is you've just passed this sign, okay? So single track road only one lane in use you can't stop on this road all traffic is going one way okay many people miss this one uh, there's a place just um coming down line kiln bank turn left at zams or turn right if you're coming up line kill bank and one way system one way street there and many people miss it so be really aware of this we have videos on this 
So all traffic's down one way. And most of the reasons why they foul is because they don't get into the right lane for turning right on the one way. Because no one's going to come down it, are they? So you need to be in the right lane. Okay, so what restrictions apply to people who have a provisional driving license? They can't drive over 30 miles an hour. Well, that's not true because we're on the dual carriageways all the time. We've learned this. They can't drive unaccompanied. So that's potential, isn't it? They can't drive at night. No, we do lessons at night. They can't drive more than one passenger. No, you can. So they can't drive unaccompanied. That's correct. You can't drive on your own. Okay, you want to turn right at a box junction. What should you do if there's no oncoming traffic? So you want to turn right at a box junction. Wait in the box junction if your exit is clear. Drive on, you can't turn right at a box junction. Nope. Wait before the junction until it's clear of all traffic. No. Drive slowly into the junction when signaled by oncoming traffic. So this breaks down again. We know we can't stop in a box junction if your exit is not clear. So you want to turn right at a box junction. What should you do if there's oncoming traffic? Okay, so I read it that there was no oncoming traffic, but it's oncoming traffic. So wait in the box junction if your exit is clear. That's the answer. So you wait there for the oncoming traffic, but if the exit wasn't clear, then you would stay back behind the stop line. Okay, so what can be damaged if you turn the steering wheel when the car isn't moving? So the gearbox, the brakes, the engine, the tyres. So the only thing that is actually making contact with the floor is the tyres. Okay, the engine, nope. The brakes, nope, because they're probably not going to be on. Or uh, well, if they are, they're just on and, you know, no problem there on the gearbox. So definitely the tyres. Definitely. Okay, sure on that one. So, when may you cross a double solid white line in the middle of the road? Okay, so you shouldn't know overtaking. That's why I understand it. So, to pass traffic that is queuing back at a junction. Mm, don't know about that. To pass a road maintenance vehicle travelling less than 10 miles an hour. Mm, okay. To pass a car signalling to turn left ahead. Is there signalling to turn left? Nope. To pass a vehicle that is towing a trailer. So, it's this one. It's to pass road maintenance vehicles less than 10 miles an hour. You have stopped in an emergency refuge area. What must you do before you rejoin the carriageway? Use the emergency telephone, okay? Switch on your vehicle's headlights. Give an arm signal as you're moving off. Move away with your hazard lights on. Okay, so you have stopped in an emergency refuge area. What must you do before you rejoin the carriageway? So, um give arm signals, move away with your hazards on. Shall we go for... Uh, mm, this is quite a difficult one. Use the emergency telephone. So you have stopped emergency refuge before you rejoin the carriageway. Have you broken down? Okay, so... Do you know what? I'm going to have to guess this one. So, I don't know about using the emergency telephone. I'm going to say move away. But then you don't really see that. An arm signal's not going to be beneficial, is it? So, I have to think about that one. And you've stopped in an emergency refuge area. What must you do before you rejoin the carriageway? So, uh, this one's actually quite difficult, actually. So, I'm going to go for use the telephone. I think. We we'll see. Okay, carrying a child under three years old in your car, which restraint is suitable for a child of this age? So, a child seat, an adult seat belt, an adult holding the child, an adult lap belt. So, three years of old, it's going to be a um, child seat, I would say. Okay, you need glasses to read a vehicle's number plate at a required distance. When must you wear them? Only in bad weather conditions. Um, when you think it's necessary, whenever you're driving, only at night. It's going to be whenever you're driving, always. If you need them, then you got to wear them when you're driving. Driving in heavy traffic on a wet road, which lights should you use if there's lots of surface spray? Okay, so main beam could blind people. Rear fog lights is when uh, rear fog lights availability is more than 100 meters. Well, that's less bit of playing with words there side lights only mm, not really going to be seen on them potentially so it's dipped headlights isn't it yeah 
dipped headlights you'll be seen. Why is a Toucan crossing different from other crossings? Well, that's because motorbike riders can use it. Mm, don't think so. It's controlled by two flashing lights. Never seen that. It's controlled by traffic warden. Mm, you'd have to stay there all day. Pedestrians and cyclists can use it. So if you remember, two can, two can use it. Cyclists and pedestrians. What does this traffic sign mean? So it's a triangle, so it's a warning. So slippery road ahead, that's warning me. Danger ahead, mm, potential. Tires liable to puncture ahead, so that's a warning. So service area ahead, so they all to be seem to be warnings. So you see when you get the exclamation mark, they normally have whatever the danger is and a little white plate underneath. So it's danger ahead of some sort, but we don't know what the danger is. Okay, what does this sign mean? So this is a lane's buses that way. So it looks like a bus lane doing something going the opposite way. So bus station on the right, no, because we've got an arrow, so it's not station. With flow bus lane, so it's not with flow because the flow's the other way. So contra flow, so contra flow means contra to the flow, the opposite to the flow, or give way to buses. Can't see a thing there, so it's contra flow, isn't it? Contra flow bus lane. Okay, so why could it be dangerous to keep the clutch down or select neutral for long periods of time while driving? So fuel spillages will occur. Mm, don't know about that. You have um, less steering or braking control. Okay, so potential. Engine damage can be caused. Well, if the clutch is down, probably the engine's just ticking over. So probably not. It will wear the tyres out more quickly. So if you select neutral then the brakes are doing all the work and you haven't got engine braking so you, you potentially will have less steering and braking control because the car might be rolling a bit quick and yes there you go okay what's the nearest you may park to a junction so 10 meters 15 meters 12 meters or 20 meters it's actually 10 meters 10 meters just so vehicles get a better view when they're trying to pull out. How can drinking alcohol affect your ability to drive a ride? Your ability to judge speed will be reduced. Potentially your reactions will be faster. Mm, probably not. Your confidence will be reduced. Confidence reduced. Your awareness of danger will be improved. So uh, if you look at the word in here, your awareness of danger will be improved. So probably not. Your reactions will be faster, probably not. Your confidence will be reduced, probably not. Although you'd hear, oh, your confidence, you've got confidence if you had a drink, but that's saying reduced. So your ability to judge speed will be reduced, probably. That probably more likely one. Okay, so what might you expect to happen in this situation? So we've got a dual carriageway and we seem to have in 800 yards, the right lane's closed. So traffic will move into the right hand lane. So we know the right hand shut, so it's probably not. Traffic will move into the left hand lane, so that's a possible. Traffic speed will increase, well, mm, probably not. Traffic won't need to change position. Well, we know they definitely will. So it's gonna be into the left hand lane. Okay, you're looking for somewhere safely to park your vehicle. Where would you choose to park? Well, at or near a bus stop, mm, maybe big buses clipping your car, maybe not. Near the brow of a hill, well, probably not because they can't see you if they're coming up the hill. In a designated parking space, so designated, it's good, good word, we like that, and parking space, so possible on the approach to a level crossing. So I'm going for designated. Okay, how should you signal if you're going straight ahead at a roundabout, okay, so we do this all day long. It's signal right on the approach and then left to leave. No. Okay, signal right on the approach to the roundabout and keep the signal on. No. Signal left after you leave the roundabout and enter a new road. No. Signal left just after you pass the exit before you're going. Yes. Very wordy and you have to read it in your mind and you have to think what you would do in your driving lessons. Um, really important here because they're all wordy and it's easy to get confused. Okay, so how will you benefit from following the manufacturer's surface schedule for your vehicle? Your vehicle will be cheaper to insure. Insurance aren't interested. Your vehicle will remain reliable. Potential, yes. Your vehicle tax will be lower. Tax doesn't change. Your journey times will be reduced. No, because, uh, no, just no, you, it doesn't really affect, you know, traffic and what have you. So, reliable, which 
if you keep it serviced up to date scheduled for the vehicle probably going to keep it cheaper less big jobs okay so what hazard do you need to look out for as a driver under the bridge so let's have a look at this video here so ooh, um so what hazards do you need to look after look out for as you drive under the bridge okay well that seems to be the road narrows doesn't it yeah um so pedestrians walking in the road a narrowing of the road overhanging trees and branches to hide the bridge i'm going for that i think what speed limit is it on this road okay so let's have a look i cannot see any street lights i cannot see any signs um yep now i can see street lights oh. So what's the speed limit on this road? Ooh, I'm going for that again. I'm going to do that again. So what have we got? Ah, I can see a street light. So street lights, no other signs. It's going to be 30. There's another street light. Them street lights were difficult to see. So street lights, no other signs, it's going to be 30. Okay, what does this single yellow line along the side of the road mean? Okay, so waiting restrictions apply uh, in certain times. No stopping at any time. Uh, it makes the edge of the carriageway. No waiting at any time. So it's a yellow line. Um, it looks like a, you don't want to be stopping your car there. So no stopping at any time. It's just one line, isn't it? So no waiting at any time. It marks the edge of the carriageway. Uh, oh, again. Oh, this is... This is awkward, isn't it? I'm going to look at that again, actually. So, yellow line, I would potentially say it marks the edge of the carriageway, but it's yellow, it's not white. So, no stopping at any time. Well, you know, you wouldn't want to stop it. You could block the road, couldn't you? Try and see if I can see any signs. Um, I'm going to go for... It's definitely yellow. No waiting at any time. It marks the edge of the road. See, I'm tempted to go and marks the edge of the road, but I'm, I'm going to go for waiting restrictions apply. But I think that could be... Thing. Let's have a look. I got 50 out of 50. So there you go. So some of the ones where I was unsure, you can go back to, you can have a look and see the way that I try and work it out. Okay, but that would give me a pass. Okay, so I really hope that helps. And I totally understand how people fail the theory test because sometimes it's very wordy. Sometimes you need to focus in what's happening, but also understand the rules, reading the highway code, listening to your driving instructor, taking it really serious because it is a serious business. Um, but you can see, and I was trying to pick out the points to see if I could always break it down with the thought process, because the thought process is so important when you're doing these theory tests. Okay, so I really hope it helps, guys, and we'll post some more over the next few weeks.